In 3D printing, there's one part of the process that is so important that it's almost more important than all other parts of the process combined. And if we don't get it right, it's a major problem. Today, what we're talking about is the first layer of your 3D print, easily the most important part of the process, yet one of the most misunderstood and misdiagnosed part of 3D printing. By the end of this video, my goal is to be able to help you diagnose exactly what's going on with your first layer, show you a few different problems and what things realistically should look like, and hopefully give you some options to solve some problems that you might be dealing with. Starting out, we need to look at what a good first layer looks like. Your first layer should be mostly free of any artifacts or visual oddities. And by the time you're done, if you're printing at 0.2 millimeter layer height, you should have something that resembles a little piece of rice paper. What we have here is near best case scenario. And if we hold it up to the light, we can see that it's almost completely flawless. Just keep in mind a near perfect first layer is almost always a near impossibility on most 3D printers. It just so happens that the 85M are really good with first layers. 3D printing can experience a lot of different artifacts and variation during the first layer process. Primarily, there are three that we want to watch out for and learn to diagnose. The first artifact that we want to learn to identify would be compression. Quite often, this is what somebody's talking about when they tell you your nozzle is printing a little bit too close to the bed. During our printing process, we could force our printer to do exactly this. All we need to do is manually bring our nozzle a little bit too close to the bed. This will result in compression artifacts or a very rough texture on our first layer. If you look closely at the first layer, you begin to understand that what's happening is the nozzle is actually dragging in below the desired layer height. If you're printing a 0.2 layer height and your nozzle is below that amount, then you're going to experience these rougher textures. With most of our modern 3D printers, this is easily solved through the touch interface. All we need to do is slowly raise the nozzle up during the printing process until these compression artifacts go away. But when your nozzle moves too far from the bed, we begin to experience our next artifact, which is something called harping. Harping happens when there isn't enough compression on your first layer. You see, ideally what you want your nozzle to do is slowly press your first layer onto your build plate. And when there isn't enough compression, we start to see a separation in the filament and the layer. And if we get down and look close at our first layer, we can start to see these gaps or separation in the first layer. And plain and off reveals exactly why it would be called harping, because it looks a lot like the strings on a harp. But there's another problem with lack of compression on your first layer. You see, unlike compression artifacts, having your nozzle too far from the bed can actually cause a different style of artifact that isn't easily recognized by a lot of people. These artifacts are still harping due to the lack of compression on the filament, but they manifest differently. Quite often they manifest as pops or bubbles in your first layer, or just globs of filament being dragged around the bed. Unfortunately, and quite often, this style artifact gets misdiagnosed in the community as wet filament. But trust me when I say this has nothing to do with the hydroscopic nature of filaments. Rather, it's a symptom of the filament not being able to stick to the bed, and the filament has to stick to something. If it can't stick to the bed, it's going to stick to itself, and if it doesn't stick to itself, it is going to stick to the nozzle. The third most common artifact is thankfully the easiest to deal with, and it has nothing to do with the configuration of your 3D printer. Rather, it has everything to do with how you maintain your build plates. This artifact would be called spotting and the reason it occurs is due to oils on your hands or any other surface that your build plate might touch this artifact shows up a little bit different because it's not really rough and we do experience good adhesion instead it looks more like a chemical reaction because that's exactly what it is you see if i take my hand and i press it down onto our build plate and begin a print for a first layer we can then remove it and almost see a outline of exactly where the oils on my hands touched our build plate. Most of the time, this is simply cosmetic and you can safely ignore it. However, 
if your plates become too dirty, you can have adhesion issues that aren't from either compression or harping. Thankfully, this is really easy to solve. All we need to do is take a little bit of time and clean off our build plates. We see if I spray down this plate with a little bit of alcohol and run my first layer again, the problem completely goes away with zero modification to the printer's configuration. And real quick, before any Facebook pseudo intellectuals hop into the comments and say you should never wash your plate with alcohol, let me remind you that a lot of these plates are specifically designed to be able to be cleaned using IPA or alcohol. Okay, so what if you're experiencing both compression and harping artifacts at the same time. This is a very common issue with 3D printing. The reasons we'll get into in a minute. But let me tell you that if you have to choose between the lesser of two evils, it's always better to have your nozzle a little bit too close to your build plate than too far away. Most of the time, unless your texture is incredibly severe, it tends to go away about the third or fourth layer. So a little bit around the edges or even on a single corner isn't going to hurt most 3D prints unless you're using your build plate to create your finished surface. I do a lot of first layer testing, so I went ahead and created an STL pack with a lot of different sizes that I might have to use. If you want to use that to go ahead and test out your first layer, feel free to check out the link in the description. You may have noticed that these issues aren't always the same and quite often the symptoms are incredibly sporadic. One thing I always recommend is that people always use the auto level for their 3D printer. All mass manufactured 3D printers on the market, Bamboo, Creality, Anycubic, and even Flashforge have the same problem. They all use a cheaply mass manufactured heat plate. And it is a 99% certainty that the next time you go to 3D print, the values from your previous auto leveling will be completely off. And I know a lot of people in the community really don't like the auto leveling process. It takes an extra five or 10 minutes and they just want to get on with their print. But personally, I'm not concerned with the speed of my start print process. I would rather know that my print is going to be successful than fast. There's a lot of weirdness when it comes to 3D printing. And sometimes you might see things that are incredibly difficult to explain. Another issue is when we look at a first layer and we see something like striping, and that's a completely different thing for a completely different video. But these are the three artifacts that you want to learn to diagnose and understand when it comes to first layers.